The chair recognizes Senator the Honorable Ruben Ramming. I'm waiting on some documents to be printed, Madam President. They should be on the way. Documents, relevant documents I presume, are relevant to the debate. Exactly. There thank you, have. thank you, Senator Ramming. I appreciate that. Thank debate. you, sir. And um, but how, how, how long? Two, three minutes. I'll start the fake that she'll be. It'll be. It'll be brought here. Would you like for someone else to? You ready, Max? No, I, I, I'll go and I have faith that, that it will be brought up here. Notwithstanding your, your instructions, Madam President, uh, the debate took a unique twist and it actually went off the rail in your, in your absence, which quite frankly opened up the door to a lot of things that needed to be articulated. And as it relates to references, uh, so, so, Madam President. Okay. Yes, I'd send the piss talk raised within his debate, again, an I, a lying item that has been refuted on many occasions as relate to the free national movement oppose, oppose, you said F and F, oppose independence. I wrote your quote. All right, opposed uh, independence. And so to, to answer that quite, quite clearly, a lot of things have been addressed and the signatories of independence that we would have heard even throughout this celebration would have said many things different. However, clearly, as I would have presented to you, video footage of our father of our nation, Sir Lyndon Pilning, being asked a direct question. The question that was asked to Sir Lyndon Pilning is, does your party want independence? Sir Lyndon Pilning answered, no. Our party does not want independence. We want full internal self-governance and not complete sovereign independence. I am grateful that I, I am grateful that our forefather had a change in disposition because my understanding of the facts of independence that the Baptist churches, as with majority rule, had a major hand in galvanizing the public in that direction towards women's suffrage and majority rules. As we know back then, the pulpits really had power. And I could say that as opposed to now where there seemed to be a diminished social impact in the pulpit. But back then, people like Ari Cooper and, and many other of our um, 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 forefathers in the faith, many of whom not only participated behind the scenes in the labor movement, those who supported persons like Sir Randall, who actually was the deciding factor in majority rule coming about, meaning self-governance, black majority governance by making that decision was backed by the, 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 the church. Not only that, we see our national symbols designed by prominent Baptist pastors, 
You see the, the Pledge of Allegiance by the Right Honorable Philip Ramming, who also has uh, the, the distinguished honor of being the one who wrote our national song, God Bless Our Sunny Climb. We also see Timothy uh, Gibson, who was an Anglican. We see also uh, Sir Hervis Bean, who is accredited with our flag and also our coat of arms. And we see great people who would have come around. We're even grateful for the Abacodians who would have once thought of secession, but they are still a part one. And so it is disingenuous to stand here and criticize the FDM and raise criticisms that is, is not founded when we have clear digital video evidence of our forefather, the father of our nation, saying that clearly, initially, that it, their party, no, our party does not want independence. We want full internal self-governance, but not complete sovereign independence, end quote. I would like to also add uh, what was a pleasure, and I learned this during our independence celebrations. And, and it's amazing how much you know when you just listen to it, that, um, that our former governor, governor general, Sir Arthur Folks, actually penned the preamble of the Constitution. And it was amazing to hear our signatory, our, one of our last remaining signatories, stood up and he spoke about how strong the intent was to, to label us as a Christian nation. And I agree with him because of, of, of the structure of our nation and inclusiveness of everyone. We're not a theocracy. Our forefather, Sir Lyndon, uh, in his wisdom, decided to remove that portion of it and, and put in an abiding respect for Christian principles. So we see there are a lot of very variations across the board, and I want to categorically refute and offer to Mr. Pistock an opportunity to send the Pistock to, to apologize for fundamental history. Because I do not, and I never would judge Sir Lyndon from the disposition that he point that he was in when he made his initial statement. I credit him for the final statement and position that he made and follow through, which included the opposition to carry us on to independence. And see, we should not disparage each other in the light of historical fact. Uh, thank you, Senator uh, Ruben Ramming. Um, Chair recognized Senator the Honorable Quinton Lightburn. Thank you, Madam President. I just had to stand on a point of order, right? Because I just wanted to be, order? no, the point of matter, um, the point of order is that I want us to find the relevance. I understand the history lesson. No, that is fine. But we have to stay on track on Madam what president, we are here to debate Madam today. President, the the, the speaker, the, the president has not given Madam you any authority to speak right now. Man. Senator Ramming, I'm going to deal with you any authority to speak. Resume your seat. I'm, I'm not to me, it. to himself. No, but he, I'm, I'm, no I'm, 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 we are here to discuss some other bills. Okay. That's all we want to do well, for the we want what we are doing the people's business. I just asked. I let you go on for five but minutes. You don't let, you don't I, let me do anything. But you don't let, you don't, you don't let the you, 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 you have to listen. Order. You do not you are, let. You are talking me. on a bill. You and are not. You are going to something else. Senator Ramming, the chair cannot address this. No, we don't want to talk about the people's business. You went on for five minutes. Nothing but see into the bill. Senator Lightburn, Senator Lightburn, resume your seat, please. The, uh, the, 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 Senate, the Senate President, the Senate President can address this. Be assured, the Senate President can address this issue. Okay. Before the thrust, the thrust of the debate, I made a statement with respect to relevance that I intend to uphold for the duration of this debate. While I was away, I understood I was not watching the debate because of the humidity in the rooms, but I was advised by the Vice President that Senator Pickstock made certain comments with respect to immigration and as well with respect to um, the, issue, the issue of independence that Senator Ramming is seeking to address. Also, Senator Ramming, I'm allowing Senator Ramming latitude to address this issue. It should not have been brought up, but I have to be fair to both sides. Since the issue was brought up, I have to be fair to both sides and allow him to address the issue. 
So once he is finished, I'm going to give him another two more minutes to come back to relevance, but we have to be fair to both sides, and he has to address. The issue should not have been brought up. I agree with that. It should not have been brought up. But since it is in the atmosphere, since it was brought up, I have to be fair to both sides, and Senator Ramming must address it on the record. Senator Ramming, can you please continue? And I thank you. I, I thank you, Madam President. Let me tell you something, Madam President. I don't give up the permanent for the temporary. I was temporarily an MP. I am going to be temporarily a senator. A senator. I am always Reuben Ramming, and I'm always a child of God. I have my faults, but when it's time for me to speak, I speak what I know to be truth, and I seek fairness in all opportunities. And I try my best to follow the rules, notwithstanding the abuses that happen to the rules, in my opinion. For the record, as soon as the, the, the infraction was made, despite the unnecessary diatribe that was allowed, out of respect, and I want you to give, never, never judge my attitude in this place as against you, Madam President. No. Because I said before and I say it again, actually I, heard, I hold you in high esteem outside this place yes. and inside this place. Yes. And quite frankly, my personal esteem for you outranks even the title. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and I, out of respect for it and the rules, submitted what I wanted to bring to you and explain the reason why it needed to be addressed. And it is relevant to the core of everything that we do here. Our character is revealed in, in our conduct, you know, no matter what we get away with. As it relates to relevance, there were any number of things that, that, that came up across the board, and, and, and these will be raised. I, I listened to the attorney, attorney general in his opening as it relates to these, these, these bills. I even listened to Senator uh, Griffin and stepping off of his presentation where he extrapolated wisely the trickle-down effect of the impact of these bills, and he lists all the other professions that would have been impacted to that. The mere fact of the legitimacy of that, that these do trickle down and touch so many aspects of our society, means that relevance on is far and wide because it impacts so many parts. I could speak about the straw market in relation to this just because it is so true what Senator Griffin says. This impacts every aspect of it. I could speak about our college students as it relates to this. Because you know why? What could your child do without corresponding banking? When we sit here on relevance, we must stop thinking on such a low plane and yet insulting people's intelligence when we ourselves can't comprehend or envision the, the full impact of, of, of a bill far down the line. The reason why this is the upper house is because it's supposed to be made up of elder statesmen who are supposed to be able to see further down the road and bring a different level of debate to the impact. And the relevance that has been stated here is far and wide. First of all, we need to rang ourselves of statements that I've made in this place before. That divisiveness stops at the border. When it comes down to these large countries attacking us in our jurisdiction, even within our debates, we're supposed to be focused on the fact and letting them know, brother, it don't matter who, who in now, who in tomorrow, our opinion is stop trying to jack us up unfairly. Now, I do, I do find a little issue with, um, with, the, with when, uh, and I understood what you saying when Senator Pinder said that uh, how convincing the Prime Minister's message was. It was not. And I'm not trying to be insulting to the Prime Minister. Let me tell you why. Because everybody has been saying the same thing to these bullies over and over and over again. And they listen to it with the same passion as, as, as the Prime Minister, it may sound good digesting home. But watch what can happen again in the next six months or 12 months. They can come again. We cannot deal with this as an island country. I'm not using the word archipelago. I want the Bahamas to be looked upon as one nation. We must combine with those other small nations. We need to leverage CARICOM. We need to leverage those in the African uh, countries. We need to leverage all of those affected. 
so that we could really bring leverage. All these people understand who are bullying us all the time, causing us to move goalposts all the time just for them. Not in our national interest, just for them. We need to stand together and we need to fight together with them to ensure that they understand that we're not fighting alone. Because you could be as impassioned as it is, and you should. The Prime Minister should put it on the record, but them brothers ain't listening. How long, Brother Asante Alkis, how long have we been getting blacklisted? How many years, roughly, just off the top here? And I will not insult any prime minister of this country to say he did not fight against that. We need to come together and we need to deal with these other things. And I agree with matters as related, raised by uh, Senator Ryan Pinder. But I must also reflect again on a matter that was raised by Senator Griffin when he spoke about the national pride and said basically when the PLP is in power, uh, the the uh, national pride is what? Enhanced? That's just, to, can you help me with your quote? He, he doesn't mean it like that. Go ahead. So they know how to celebrate. I, I, Do you know? <laughs> yeah, help me, yeah. help me with that. I, I, in, in relation to the PLP, I just said that the remarks around independence were that the PLP knows how to celebrate the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. That's it. The remarks. Yeah. And, and I think I need to add to it. I saw that remarks from Latour Ramming Ram Ram on the side. I think I better see. I might have seen it. Could have, other people could have reposted it. Thank you. Chair. Speak to the chair. Um, but the, the thing about it as well, though, when you look at it systematically and historically, you know, the, the, the PLP seemed to have a very strong propensity of, of jacking up our electricity. I still wonder. And you want me to tell you how this relates? Because all of you all brought it up. You really must fight all right? Down. Because when we, right now, doing independence and our heritage and everything else and the pride that everybody else is feeling, yet at the same token, right now, we are, we are, we are suffering because of the costs as relate to the enhanced electricity bills, electricity costs, the situations as relate to the roads and the degradation of the roads and the harm that is occurring to other people. And, and the discomfort that is accruing financially and otherwise as a result of situations and decisions that have been made affecting our power plan. We sit here today, and when we look at, this, at these bills, we see three primary things that this bill seek to cover. In our, in my, in our uh, financial services sector, a few things primarily will be impacted. One is called corresponding banking. The second one is related to the insurance industry because of reinsurers. The third one is related to also remittances, and thus the necessity of these amendments. Sometimes we may have to, I agree, Senator Griffin, sometimes we may have to amend one line. And I support Senator um, Barnett, that it, Barnett that if it's already in another bill, uh, I hope we didn't miss something because we don't need confusion if, if it's addressed in two places, because if it is addressed in two places, at the least, let's ensure it's addressed um, seamlessly and accurately to not create discrepancy and choices between the two. We just passed legislation in this, in this Senate to allow us to review and update um, laws where there may have been errors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we just passed that, that legislation just a few weeks ago in this House. But now when we look at the wider scope of this, this still speaks to national issues. Because when it comes down to corresponding, corresponding banking, as I forestated, stated, that is critical to everything that we do. That is even critical to the way the country itself pays its national debt. We do have debt in, in, in behemoth currencies to entities here in the Bahamas, but we also have foreign debt um, that we borrow in, in foreign currencies as well. And those things also involve foreign, foreign banking. As simple as you going on Amazon and making a purchase, Madam President. You need the corresponding banking to do that. Because the, 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 the statement that they, they're saying that no man is an island is true of banking. We saw during the russian ukraine war when the US started to uh, 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 affect corresponding banking for Russia with the, what's called the SWIFT, the SWIFT program. And Russia found another way in which to do its exchange with China. We see now, we see now how corresponding banking can be weaponized. 
It has been weaponized against us. Um, hey, how long? How long it was? Uh, Senator Keys about twenty, about twenty-three years. And sometimes we get so caught up fighting among ourselves. Sometimes, and it's needed sometimes because that's democracy. And the government should have its way, but the opposition must have its say. That's fairness. That's the spirit of all these houses, upper and lower. But we must always remember the enemy at the gate. We stand here now and see Jamaica being pressured by the, by the United States uh, as related to the ambassadors and relation to matters of same-sex marriage. My understanding is that letter has been passed throughout all the Caribbean countries. I'm wondering if it's, if it's already been uh, here for our consideration. We must always remember that behemoth self-interest must come first because with the American and any other country, their self-interest come first. We must galvanize ourselves, the people in the same situation, to protect ourselves. I personally am sick and tired of the black list, the gray list, and all those lists. I remember how some of our greatest assets and things that we developed in, for, in, in, in financial services have now been transferred to places like the Cayman Islands and stuff who are making buco dollars, but we have to restrict ourselves. But yet, who is the greatest offender more than Delaware in the United States? Who abuse the very same things, but they won't touch them? Then we have things as relate to the insurance and reinsurance. This is critical right now. Even now, we, we, we find ourselves struggling with this. And I'm glad we now appreciate the value of insurance. Because beforehand, when we had the CRIFT insurance, which, which, which uh, protects our island against catastrophic loss, under the then PLP, they, 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 they canceled it, say it wasn't worthwhile. Uh, we reinstated it, and it, it paid tremendous dividends during uh, Dorian. And I'm pleased to know that in the budget, not this one, but probably the last budget, they, it was emphasized that they are not only continuing it, they're renegotiating it. And I, and I take that to mean that they're finding ways to further enhance it and to expand it, because you need that. Why is this so critical? We would not have been going through the hell we went through in government and, and through Dorian as a nation and the burden on the payment people through government if those 85% of the homes in Africa was insured. 85% of the homes in, in Abaco and those affected by Dorian was not insured. And they put an inordinate burden not only on the government, but on the behemoth people in general. And this is a culture we need to fight against. So uh, reinsuring is not only important, but keeping it at a favorable rate and ensuring that we can manage the risk factor is critical to our national development. And now with the soaring cost of home maintenance, the cost of shipping has not totally gone down, notwithstanding the government's uh, proclaimed effort to negotiate wages to help that. It still had not gone down sufficiently. The cost of electricity is now uh, equal to some people's rent and mortgages. And now the insurance, and it's more than paying, um, um, uh, um, leaving Peter to pay for Paul, you're literally leaving Paul to pay for the rest of the apostles. Because the burdens is real on the behemoth people. So these things speak to far-reaching stuff. Then we reach down to matters of remittance. Let yeah, us everybody use Western Union and all them other different type of things to send these funds across the board and how that impacts us in terms of our GDP. And remittance does speak directly to the issue of the matter even as related to immigration. Because if you look at some of the statistics, it will show that as related to the Haitian community in and of itself, you'll find that a minimum of $60 million a year is sent off in remittances. And all these things are, are things that these amendments and these bills seek to address. Then it caused me to remember a, a matter that Senator Pistock raised, what I find is very, um, very offensive to the Bahamian people. It almost reminds me of how every election, every election cycle they play roots and then you play white against black and all that kind of stuff. And we get white people in our parliament, we have white people in our senate, black people in our parliament. We are called behemoths. Quite frankly, quite frankly, our culture, frankly our culture, we call our white behemoths conky joes. The spirit of that. And I revision it, I, it's a revisionist on the fact that he stood right up here and, and Senator Pistock made a clear statement as it relates to 
Uh, he's saying the unfairness of the former administration, like saying that what we do is like we appease one foreign national group, meaning the white persons, to disaffect those foreign immigrants of, of a black color. You see what I'm saying? And, and he mentioned black and white. And I will call for the review of the handset because I wrote my note. And, and you all review that in the meantime. And so here it is now. We look at it, we look at it, we look at it, we look at it, we look at it in modern times. We look at it in modern times. I hope he's listening to it on your phone because obviously I don't know the TV on in there yet. It wasn't on when I left. Then when we look at this, we find something that is, that is, that is very, very interesting. I raise, I, raise, I raise to this because our, our immigrants does a higher level, a high level of remittances which also involves banking, corresponding banking, and everything else, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember strictly when uh, Senator, when the me member Bell uh, for immigration made a statement, a public statement when he spoke to no removal of work permits. I just got these documents, so I'm supposed to do it. When he began to speak, I read them and didn't mark them. Yeah. Who was the relevance about anything you, you talked about, you raised, Senator Vic Stock, when you spoke? Unnecessarily. Senator Bell on, Mi Minister Bell, Keith Bell, on July the 19, 2023, said, said as related to, mod to immigrants in the country, pack it up. Uh, the headline says, pack it up. Immigration minister warns illegal migrants uh, to leave voluntarily or face deportation. That Senator, we, Senator. The whole matter of immigration speaks to not only foreign currency but foreign remittances, which I already established. That foreign remittances are done by those different class of immigration. I gave you the statistics as relate to that as well. You cannot accept remittances on one part and the other, and also the fact that it was raised by Senator Pistock in this place, and also that it's raised to that, and this speak directly to that, and and I raise uh, as relate to that. And this speaks to the international, international business. It, even if I did, it doesn't concern you. Now, no, no, the mere fact, the mere fact about it, I'm reading one line, Madam President. The mere fact about it, Senator Bell made note. Bell noted that the Bahamas is not only seeing irregular migration from Cubans and Haitians, um, but also American Brazilians, et cetera, et cetera. But yet we find, yet we find, yet we find recently, Apart from telling all of those to pack up and get out, we find recently that he actually tell the Chinese, the Chinese, get off the bus, we can get you sorted out. Senator, Senator Raming, Senator Raming. Now that's a problem. Senator Raming. Now that's a problem. Senate order. That's a problem. Order. Order. How, how, how could order. The arrest you? Order. 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 Senator Raming. Senator Raming. I need you to come back, immediately come back to relevance, and I'm going to order struck from the record. Oh, Madam, I, Madam President, I established relevance. I'm, I'm not finished yet, Senator Romney. Okay. I'm not I finished apologize. yet. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and you raised it. Senator Pickstock. Senator Pickstock. Senator Romney. Senator Romney, let me remind you that we are debating the International Business Companies Amendment Bill as well as the Exempted Limited Partnership Amendment Bill. Right? You can quote from, use various references to quote from newspapers, etc., once they're relevant to the debate at hand. I do not find that the newspaper article that you're quoting from with respect to statements made in the other place by the minister relevant to the debate at hand. Okay. I am going to aw I'm going to order those utterances struck from the record. Now, I'm not finished yet, Senator yeah, Romney. Just give me give me 30 seconds. Yes, ma'am. I'm asking you when you resume to please return to relevance <laughs> of the debate of the matter at hand. And I thank you. I thank you. Yeah. Uh, Madam, ma ma Madam, 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 Madam President, in, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my notes of the proceedings, which I actually did, 
and the first, the mover of this bill made reference to these exact same points, Madam President. The movers of this bill make reference to this exact same point. If you want to, I can actually show you in my phone the exact time, whereas I requested the clerk to please print this matter out while Senator Pistock was speaking because he raised matters that impacted this. I will let you see it on my phone. And, and corresponding banking, as I had already established very, very clearly, in just one immigrant category, remittances exceed, far exceed $60 million million dollars, which is just like corresponding banking, reinsurance, and all the matters that was listed by the Attorney General, which is relevant to this debate as established, is relevant exactly in this hand. And, and, and let me just further say, the issue, the big salient issue, and if you, if you, the salient issue, even as related to the recent matter, was guess what? One thing you know, payment of the remuneration to the immigration department by persons who work here to whom payment is also remitted as well. In both categories, it, 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 it sits right in the heart of all these matters that, that we seek to address. Because that is what actually happens. Uh, when a foreign worker comes here and leaves their family home and they work here to be paid here, what do you think happens to their money? They take it, they take it, it goes into the bank, all right, the corresponding banking handles that. We log that into our country's database so we could have record of how remittances are made. That's why when you go into Cash and Go and all those other places, you fill out those forms for tracking, not only for tax, purpose, tax purposes. And, and without that, without what we are seeking to amend right now, and to address those matters with blast listings, et cetera, et cetera, guess what happened? all these remittances of any kind will cease to exist. It will mess up our financial services sector, our number two industry in this country, and it will literally leave our nation dead in the water. That's how big the gun is that they hold to our head. And that's the relevant of this, whether anyone likes it or not, it is the relevant to it, and it also touches on matters that had already been ar arose in this place by members opposite. Now, they may not like it, but it is clearly relevant. And I stated it before, and I stand on those relevant. And guess what? All this is, is just simply me quoting what was said in this place and allowed in this place without ex expunging. That's all I'm doing. So if it right, it right. It right. You're devoid of a moral compass, my good brother. And if you're right, you're right. And so this is all I'm, that's all I'm seeking to do. So if they have a problem with it, that is not a concern of mine. The president is standing around to, to bring the relevancy. So in light of this reality, and in sight of everybody else, I, I asked to reconsider that, and I restated the relevance clearly. So on this overall matter, I want us to remember the salient points that I'm going to repeat again. We are forced at gunpoint to do things that are many times not in our national interest. And I would ask Senator Alkides to guide me in this statement. We as a country, we always speak about our track athletes and all this other stuff, and, you know, and our artisans as great people. In financial services, the Bahamas created many of the products that other nations are excelling in right now that we almost had to waive because of blacklisting pressure. Is that correct, Minister Alkides? Just nod ahead. Uh, many of them. The, the Cayman Islands and some of those jurisdictions that don't give a hoot about nothing have taken over us in some of those things because of the restrictions that we are, have been forced on us that other jurisdiction has taken us over in certain financial services offerings that we once excelled in. And that's a problem. And that's a problem. And what is also not another problem, when we try to say that 85% of our um, behemoth dollar comes in through our
tourism sector, one of the main things that we have been driving into the point, almost every government, is to ensure that as much of that money stays home and circulates home. So when people speak about relevance, I can't yield to limited understanding. I must kneel to people who understand the national impact that any move of this kind impacts us all. We import over a billion dollars. Where the food alone, we're not counting all the other materials. Everything that, virtually everything in this country, every building, every car has been imported. And when we are hamstrung by these things, that impacts us to the core. So when behemoths are, when we are encouraging people to spend at home and buy at home, it is important for me to remind the minister uh, of, of, of a, a statements that causes a leak in revenue. For example, the, the work permits. So when the commitment was made that there be um, no new work permits for Haitian migrants until revised protocols are being made, you know what that speaks to? That speaks to probably more opportunities where the vehemence who want it can get those opportunities. So that's more money staying and circulating home than being remitted outside. That's the reality of it. But then you turn around and you, you when, 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 when persons were caught duly in breach of the law without payment, that payment need to be made to our coffers. That's the least we get. Because obviously, as any good parent would of any nationality, they're going to remit that salary off. So apart from the kung salad they buy here, or, or the water they drink here, or basic stuff, most of that is going off. So we can't sit here and, 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 and play this, 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 and this is not at, this, this is not at you. I, was, I, I won't say that because they still think it's at you. But we need to, we need to think above board. We need to stop being insulting of people's intelligence. Yeah. Some people look at things holistically. Some people things look at things through a blinded eye. And good governance is not about looking things with blinders on. Because every one thing you do could have a domino effect throughout the whole country. And we need to try to foresee the impact on everyone. And if we can't speak to the impact of everyone, then what are we here for? What are we here for? So with that, I remind us, Madam President, that let's keep our demons to ourselves when we are fighting those who are attacking us. There are times enough for us to take our battle. We still have an excess of, 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 of work permits in areas that we have mastered long time ago, the hotel industry. I grew up in the hotel industry. Um, Philip was the, um, uh, Philip was the uh, financial controller of the Sheridan Grand. I was executive management there. And it used to bother me that every time they send in a new financial controller, Philip got to train him. And he is his boss. I watched that over and over again. It's better now to see how more of our people are taking over the industry. I'm still grieved that there are still foreign uh, companies that came in to do major works still operating in the Bahamas doing major, major works. We need to do better to ensure that behemoths that are qualified can take advantage of these things and ensure that like the Jewish people, one dollar goes around in the Jewish community 19 times before it go out. We can't have it just pop it in, into somebody's pocket and the rest of it just pop out of the Bahamas and call it that. We need that money to spread around, Madam President. And with that, and with that, I rest.